Hello, my dear class 9 students, welcome back. So we'll continue with the second part of the structure of atom. Yesterday, I have given a brief introduction about the Thomson model of an atom. And Thomson is one of the scientists who has first like uh, given the model of an atom. Okay, but yes, there's a drawback. And then uh, there's another scientist and then like there, there, many scientists have come. Okay, and then they have given their uh, model, their own model. So now, Thomson, yesterday I have uh, explained about Thomson uh, model of an atom that uh, it is like a watermelon, right? It is like a watermelon where the red edible part, that is the positive part, and then the, uh, the seeds, the black color which are embedded in it, that represents the uh, negative one, right? The electrons. So now, uh, here, one of the failure, okay, one of the failure is that uh, it did not say anything about the nucleus, okay? The nucleus did not mention anything about the nucleus, but uh, I have shown you the present day atom, the structure. There, we have nucleus at the center, right? But Thomson did not mention anything about the nucleus. And now, the electrons, okay? According to him, According to him, the electrons are embedded in, in this manner, like a watermelon, right? But uh, the drawbacks is that he did, not, he did not clearly mention whether these electrons are fixed or they are uh, revolving. Clear. So those were the drawbacks. And um, the important points from the uh, Thomson model of an atom is that uh, this the structure of atom it's like a post it's it's, it's like a sphere where uh, the electrons are embedded in it and then the other the other one the sphere the whole sphere is a positive sphere clear or we'll say a cloud now uh, he also mentioned that he also mentioned that the magnitude okay the magnitude Of photons and electrons are equal. Okay, so uh, if plus and minus are equal, that means atoms becomes a neutral. So according to uh, him, he mentioned this point. But he, he did not have any uh, experimental evidence in support. Clear? So now, uh, the next model of atom we'll discuss about uh, is the Rutherford model of an atom. Okay. Rutherford has, uh, has also played a very important in contributing to the structure of an atom. So now we will study about it. Okay, so students, uh, for Rutherford model of atom, he he did an experiment, okay? He did an experiment, and that experiment is very important. So uh, he took a gold foil, okay? A thin gold foil. Why he took a gold? Gold is expensive, but why he took a gold foil? Because gold is uh, a malleable, right? Gold, gold, gold can be uh, beaten into a thin sheets, right? So he took a thin gold foil, and he placed it in this way. Clear? So this is an experiment, okay? And here is a screen. Here is a screen, and this is a thin, let's say thin gold foil. Clear? So basically he wants to see the uh, movement of electrons as well. Clear? Now here, this machine is M. Uh, okay, alpha, alpha ray emitter, okay, emitter. And then he took the alpha particles, okay, and these alpha particles are helium, helium, because helium has an atomic mass of 4 U, right? So he took an alpha particle, that is helium ions, and then he bombarded it, okay? He bombarded it. 
So it's like, see, this is a thin aluminum foil and he is bombarding these alpha particles uh, from this emitter, okay? From a machine, he is throwing, okay? Splitting those alpha particles straight into this gold foil. Okay, and this is very interesting because he wants to observe uh, what will happen, okay? What will happen once these alpha uh, particles hit this gold foil, okay? Because so far, uh, the structure of atom is not ready yet, right? Thomson did, but again, there was a drawback, clear? So now, through this experiment, he is also trying to contribute. So now, the splitting, this is how the splitting of alpha particles take place. Now, according to him, he thought, Rutherford thought that uh, uh, when like these particles hit this, uh, hit this gold foil, okay, gold foil, these alpha particles will bounce back, will come back, will deflect there. But on contrary, what happened is that, okay, what happened is that, uh, Many, okay, many alpha particles went straight, okay. It crossed this gold foil and it hit this screen. Clear, it hits the screen. Out of this, many alpha particles, majority, okay, I'm saying majority of the alpha particles went through this, went past through this uh, thin gold foil and it hit the screen. That means from here, uh, from here we can, we can see that this, this thin gold foil, most of the part is empty, right? Most of the part is empty, that's why it can pass through, right? But some alpha particles deflated like this, clear? Deflated. Some alpha particles deflated. Some alpha particles deflated, and the third is uh, one out of 12, thousand okay one out of twelve thousand they bounce back okay that means they deflected back in 180 degree they went back straight that means from here students uh, there is something there is something heavy particles in the middle right something heavy particle is concentrated in the middle that's why it is deflecting back but the majority of these alpha particles went through it okay so from here, this Rutherford concluded that in the structure of an atom, th there is a proton, okay? Or there is a nucleus, which is concentrated in the middle. And this is the experimental evidence. Because these alpha particles, it deflected back 180 degree, right? It deflected back 180 degree. So this is what he was trying to uh, show through, the, through this experiment. Clear? Now, he also took an example that uh, the structure of atom is like uh, the solar system. Clear? Where the planet revolves. Okay, it's like this. So this is the nucleus. Clear? And in solar system, the planet revolves around, right? So he was taking example, uh, this planet as an electron. Okay, according to him, the electron revolves around. But student, uh, the failure, the major failure, and this is important so you can note it down, the major failure drawback about the Rutherford model of atom, this, uh, the experiment which he gave was very good. Okay, through this, it has been uh, beneficial, it has contributed a lot to the structure of atom, but the major drawback is that he said that electrons, okay, electrons, uh, they revolve around, right? But in today's context, in today's context, in the structure of atom, now we have a discrete orbit, clear? Yesterday I have shown you, right, we have a layer of orbit. Okay, in today's structure of atom, we have in the middle, we have nucleus, where we have protons and neutrons, and then we have four shell, okay? We have four discrete orbit. We have four, see, one, two, three, four, clear? So according to Rutherford, this electron, they revolve around the nucleus. 
clear that means students see if they are revolving around means they are going they are going to radiate energy okay they are going to radiate energy clear when they are radiating energy means they are uh, accelerating clear that means they are accelerating accelerating that means at some point of time it will get tired and it will fall in this nucleus right so this does not make sense so this was the major failure clear he did not uh, mention about this the position of this electron or the distribution of this electron or the uh, stability of, of the atom he did not mention clear so that was the drawbacks of the uh, Rutherford model of an atom, but uh, the discovery of nucleus is credited to him. Clear. So now we the next we are going to study about the Niel Bohr. Okay, Niel Bohr model of an atom. He gave a successful model of an atom. Clear. He was so curious about the distribution of electrons. Now so far we have seen that many scientists like Goldstein and then Thomson, and then Rutherford, they came along, right? And then everyone, they contributed a, a very like a major part in the structure of atom, but there were some drawback, there were some drawback, right? Now, uh, the fourth one, now that we are going to study is nail bore model of an atom, okay? Okay, so students, Next is we have Niel Bohr model of an atom, okay? And he gave a successful model of an atom, okay? And like I have said, this Bohr was curious about the distribution of electrons, right? Distribution of electrons. So now he said that uh, if this is a nucleus where protons and neutrons are there, clear. Now there is a fixed, okay? There is a fixed dis discrete shells. Fixed discrete shells, four. We have four shells, okay? In the structure of atom. And then the first shell is known as K shell, okay? K, K like in kite. And the next is L. Okay, L like in lion. Then we have M, and then we have N. Okay, K, L, M, N shell. And then these are also represented by a number, uh, the K is also known as N is 1, okay, 1, this is the first shell, and then the L shell is also known as the second shell, clear, and then the M shell is also known as the third shell, okay, N here represents the number, okay, N here represents the number, and then this N N shell here, N represents 4. So this is the fourth shell. Okay, this is the fourth shell. So students, now Bohr said that when electron revolve, okay, uh, they are fixed shells, and then when electrons revolve around this uh, orbit, they don't radiate energy. Okay, so that's the major one. They do not, they don't radiate energy clear there is a fixed orbit and then when electron revolves here they do not radiate energy okay so now you can see the difference right in Rutherford he did not mention anything about this orbit and then he said that electron revolves around right that means if electron they are revolving around means they are accelerating clear and then they are radiating energy but now here, in the, uh, for Bohr model of atom, now he said that when electron revolve around these shells, clear, fixed orbit, they do not radiate energy. Okay, so that is the difference you have to know. And then these shells you have to keep in mind. Clear. So now electrons are distributed here in these shells. Okay, so students, uh, Tomorrow we'll talk about valency shells.
clear valence electron and then valence shell everything we'll talk about and then we will also uh, discuss about the uh, atomic number okay see you know that in the periodic table we have a elements right and all the elements they are arranged in the increasing order of atomic number right so for now just by looking at the periodic table it might sound confusing to you but actually this atomic number are all we can uh, we can just calculate okay with taking the sum of the protons and neutrons clear so we will discuss about that in our next class students clear so whatever we have discussed today that is the thomson model of an atom there is uh, the next is the rutherford model of an atom clear and then the bohr model of an atom uh, you note down the important points and then the diagram or the postulates you refer to your ncrt science textbook clear and then uh, especially for the Rutherford model of an atom, you have to remember that that alpha scattering, okay, that is the alpha scattering that is a helium ion, okay, helium ion. So you note down everything, we will uh, continue with our next uh, topic in our next class. Thank you so much students.